Praise the Lord and good evening. We join New Beginnings Community Church. Our pastor is Pastor William Beasley Sr. We thank you for joining us tonight. We will be singing Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. We don't own the rights to this music, but we ask you to lift up the name of the Lord with us. Thank God for you all tonight, once again, at our uh, Bible study here at New Beginnings. Thank God for New Beginnings being with us. Thank God for our little guest tonight. <laughs> and uh, we thank God for uh, his tender mercy and his kindness. He said, but two or three would gather together in his name. He would be in the midst. So we give honor to the spirit of Christ tonight. 
For all the provisions that he hath made for our mind to be assembled together as many places that we could have been, but we did have a desire to be in the presence of the Lord. So we thank God for that. For we know that he is soon to come. His return is near, oh so near. We want to be ready. And with that being said, we are still in the book of Matthew, and we are still being taught how to pray from our Lord, because we are still disciples of Christ. Yeah. And so we're back in the sixth chapter, book of Matthew, tonight, dealing with the 13th verse. And I'll be reading King James Version only tonight. You can follow along in the translation that you use. We'll pray real fast, and then we'll get into the lesson. But bow here, dear gracious and heavenly Father, in the precious name of Jesus, we come tonight thanking you once again for your tender mercy and your kindness. Thank you for another opportunity to come to, for your presence to study of your word, for we know it's your word that's going to <clears throat> deliver us. We know it's your word that's going to heal us. It's going to set us free. It's going to keep us until your return. We thank you, Father God, for you said faith coming by hearing, hearing by the word of God. So we know that our faith is increased every time that we hear and believe the word of God. We just thank you for your provisions and how you made it so. We ask that you will continue to lead us and guide us. Be with us, Lord God, and we'll praise you and glorify you in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> Lesson title tonight, uh, Lead Us Not Into Temptation. Lead Us Not Into Temptation. And temptation is an interesting concept because temptation has a twofold meaning. Temptation in the aspect of, of, of God has one perspective and temptation in its meaning has a, another perspective. And so one must one must pay attention to what he or she is going through in order to be able to determine uh, temptation. But since we are dealing with Jesus still teaching his disciples, we're gonna we're gonna follow uh, temptation and uh in this concept, which we'll see when we read Matthew 6 and 13. Matthew 6 and 13 says, And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. This is the Lord teaching his disciples in the manner in which to pray. And he's he's suggesting to them that when they, that when they pray, that when we pray as disciples, that we should pray uh, that the Lord lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Mm -hmm. So we see that. This concept of temptation is suggested as uh, allurement, seduction, attraction, to draw, to pull, the intentional enticement of a person. That is the temptation that Jesus is uh, encouraging his disciples to pray. You and I being disciples, 
you and I are encouraged also to pray in this manner. Mm -hmm. Now, that word, that word lead, scripture says, lead us not into temptation. That word lead would suggest to go forward, to guide, escort, to take around as, as a companion, conduct one's life to drive forth. Mm -hmm. Now, Jesus said to his disciples that in this manner, we ought to pray. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. So, in other words, our prayer to, to the Lord is, is for him to guide us not into allurement, to guide us not into seduction, to guide us not into attraction, to guide us not to be drawn, to guide us not to be pulled. That word lead also suggests to take around as a companion. So if he's if he's to lead us or if he's to guide us, then it's, it all, lead also suggests that he, he takes us around as a companion. And so our uh, prayer should be not to be uh, enticed or not to be taken around where we can be lured or where we can be seduced or we can be drawn or we can be pulled from him. He said, but deliver us from evil. And then he, he goes on to say, for thine, or in other words, for yours is the kingdom. He's saying, you, you are, a kingdom is a realm or a domain that is uh, ran by a king. Mm -hmm. So hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. When disciples pray, we ought to pray that we are not guided or that we are not taken around as companions to be allured or to be seduced because this kingdom or this realm or this domain is yours and you are the power and the glory forever. This is the manner. So I said from the onset that temptation has a twofold. And so when the, when the Lord is teaching his disciples how to pray, he is teaching them to pray against the enticement of temptation, the seduction of temptation. But you have to understand when you and I are being tempted of God, we are not we are not being lured or seduced, but we are being scrutinized, we are being proved, we're being tested, we are being tried. I said on the onset that temptation was has a twofold. And what you and I have to come to the understanding is is that when we're going through temptation, we have to recognize, are we being lured into evil? Or are we being tried or proven by God? We take our time and understand because these, 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 this is how disciples ought to pray. Because in, in our life, that word lead also that word lead also suggests conduct uh, conduct one's life. So you you and I must understand that life is a test. Life is a trial, and we have to go through this life by faith, and we have to go through this life uh, not only by faith, 
but trusting in the Lord. Why? Because yours is the kingdom. This realm, this domain that we're in is yours, and you are the power, and you have the glory forever. Amen. So we have to understand whether we're being tried or whether we whether we're being lured into evil. And we should always pray not to be lured into evil. But we should always understand when we are being tried and tested because the trial of our faith is more precious than, than, than silver or gold unto God. One place he says that a tree, that he purges a tree, that it would bring forth more fruit. One place, if you remember the story of Job, which we won't rehearse it now, but Job was considered unto Satan. The Lord was not luring Job into evil. The Lord was proving or scrutinizing or testing or trying Job's integrity, his faith. So you have to understand where we stand in the midst of of this life that we're going through. You have to understand because the Lord scripture says that he chastens. He's up, the Lord is always chasing us, chastening us. We are always being uh, uh, disciplined of God. We're <laughs> always being disciplined because we have an adversary that is always trying to lure you and I into evil. And so you have to understand when we get to the place where we say, oh, it's okay, it's okay, we're in trouble. We are, we are, <laughs> we are slowly but surely falling into temptation, the enticement of temptation. Because it's not okay. A whole lot of things are not okay. But let's get into the lesson. Lead us not into temptation. We serve the king of the kingdom. We serve the, the king of this realm, this domain. All right. Uh, Genesis, it's on the worksheet. We on the worksheet. But if you don't have a worksheet, it's in your Bible. Genesis, the third chapter, the sixth verse. And it says this. I'm reading King James Version only tonight. Genesis 3 and 6 says, And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and the tree to be desired to make one wise, she took the fruit of she took the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Now, that that type of temptation is what disciples as disciples we have to pray that the king that the king of this realm, of this kingdom, that he lead us or guide us not into. This type of temptation was enticement. It was uh, allurement. And they fell for the enticement. They fell for the allurement. They fell, they were drawn and they were pulled into enticement. You know the story of Adam and Eve. We don't have to rehearse it. You, you know the story. Uh, the Lord told Adam, out of all the trees in the garden, you can freely eat, except for the trees in the midst of the garden, the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. He said, don't eat. But all the rest you can eat. Now, we're talking about temptation. God didn't put them in the garden to seduce them. He didn't put them in the garden to allure to to allure them to lure them. He put them in the garden to try them, to prove them. How you, why you say that? Because the Lord told Adam, the day you eat of that fruit, you shall surely die. A lot of us haven't figured, figured out that the Lord already knew. 
in his infinite wisdom. Mm -hmm. But when he put them in the garden and told them to have dominion of their garden and till and work their garden, he, he already knew that they would be lured. He already knew that they would fail temptation. They would fail his scrutinizing, scrutiniz they would fail him proving them, and they would be lured. Because he told him, the day that you eat it, that day you eat it, the day you eat it, you're going to surely die. You got to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Those of us that like to give ultimatums, they don't work. <laughs> I know this is not necessarily an ultimatum, but uh, temptation, you, you know, temptation is a twofold. Temptation is a lurement on one hand, and it's a trial on the other hand. So you can toss that out there if you want to. Matthew, fourth chapter, verse 1 through 11. We're going to read verse 9 on the worksheet. Verse 9 says, And says unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. We know what that's about. We know what that's about. Since I'm right here in fourth, fourth chapter, verses 1 through 11. Verse 1 says, Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. He was led into the Spirit of the will. He was led into the wilderness of the, of the Spirit to be tempted of the devil. To be tempted of the devil is a lurement. It's an enticement. It's a seduction, attempt to seduce. He was led out there by the Holy Ghost to be tempted of the devil. To be tempted of the devil. Verse 2, and when he had fasted 40 days, 40 nights, he was after home. Verse 3 says, and when the tempter came to him, he said, if thou be the son of God, command that these stones be made bread. Verse 4. But he answered and said, it is written, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. He passed his trial. He passed his test. The devil tried to seduce him. The devil tried to lure him. But the Holy Ghost proved him. The Holy Ghost tried him, proved his faith. And he 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 uh he didn't yield to the temptation because he stood on the word of God. You have to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. This is why Jesus teaches his disciples how to pray in this manner. Your philosophy and my philosophy does not work in spiritual warfare. God has given us, we have in our last lesson, it said God has given us uh, all things to life. I mean, gave us, he gave us life and breath and all things. We have to find it, we have to understand that at every crossroad, we are either being tried or we are being lured. And when we fail to respond by the word of God, we have just been enticed. When we fail to stand on the word of God, we have just, just think, just think if Jesus would have turned them stones into bread, he would have been seduced. We don't, you and I, you and I never, ever obeyed Satan. Satan is only here to steal, kill, and to destroy. He's here to entice, to seduce, to draw you and pull you away from, from the Lord. That's, that's his job. And so it is so it is so important that we understand. And this in this last day that we're living in, we have we have become too intelligent for our own good. Because we come up with our own little cute philosophies and sayings why, you know, we perhaps would have turned the bread into stone and just said, well, I did that just to show the Satan that I got the power. No. 
No, we, 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 we can't do stupid stuff like that. We have to understand temptation is either the Lord trying you, try, well, trying your faith, trying your faith, or Satan is seducing you. You have to understand there is no middle ground. There is no middle ground. Either we stand on the word in the midst of temptation like Jesus did, or we get seduced by Satan like Adam and Eve did. Wake up. Wake up. This is how disciples pray. Jesus said, look. Jesus said, look. Look, disciples, when you pray, <laughs> tell God to lead, to guide you not into in temptation, not into lurement, but deliver you from the evil. Because his, because he is the king of this kingdom. He is the power. He is the glory. In other words, he can do it if you stand on faith and you trust and believe God's word. All right, got to run. Matthew 26 and 41. Oh, back on the worksheet. It says, watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing but the flesh is weak. We know what this is. This is this is the, uh, the Jesus passion. This is Jesus being crucified. This is Jesus. This is Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane being portrayed. This is leading up to his passion. He's in the Garden of Gethsemane, about to be betrayed by Judas. And once again, he tells his disciples, "Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation." That watch and pray that you be not seduced or lured into evil. He said, the spirit is willing. The spirit is willing to stand on the word of God. They said, but the flesh is weak. The flesh is where we make excuses and try to justify evil. The spirit is willing. The spirit, it's, it's I don't know, it's a... Uh, you know, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost doesn't have, the Holy Ghost doesn't have a need for a whole lot of this stuff that we allow the flesh to seduce us into. Let me put it, let me make it very plain. He said the spirit is willing to watch and pray and stand against uh, the, the lurement, but the flesh is weak. The spirit, we had, we had that lesson way back. The spirit does not lust against the flesh. That is the weak flesh trying to justify enticement and being lured into what you want to do anyway. All right, no, I, you know, I ain't paid. So you have, so. The point is, you have to understand that temptation is a twofold. It's a twofold. It's not temptation. is is, is not just something that we can uh, justify or explain away. No, temptation is a twofold. Temptation is uh, the Lord testing and trying our faith, or is Satan enticing or luring us? It's not, so you have to understand what side you're going to be on. And so he's telling the disciples, this is how you pray. Look, he's telling them, look, this is God's kingdom. This is, he has the power, he has the glory. So when you pray, you tell him, lead us not into this. Lead us not into lure And so when you are being guided by the spirit, and you come through hardships or testing trials in your life, remember that the Lord, he's scrutinizing you, he's proving you, he's trying you, he's testing your faith because he chastens every son that he received. He chastens every son that he loved. And, and, chast and chastisement is just discipline. We have to live a disciplined, sanctified, set apart, holy life. But yet still, because the flesh is weak, we justify fulfilling the lust of the flesh every day of our life as if it ain't nothing. 
But I just got to teach the word. I just got to teach the word. Yours is the kingdom. <laughs> this is your kingdom. You, you are the king of this realm and this, dom this domain. Let me, let me run. Uh, I read Matthew 26, 41. 1 Corinthians 10 and 13. The King James Version only tonight. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. It says, there has no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye be able to bear it. Think about that. There has no enticement. There has no lurement. There has no seduction. Try to pull you away, but that which is common to us. That which is common to man. He said, but God is faithful who will not suffer or who will not permit or who will not endure or allow you to be tried, tested on his part or on Satan's part lured or enticed above that you are able. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. A lot of times uh, we, a lot of times we are, we let the victory go just because we let it go. <laughs> we, the Scripture said the Spirit is willing. It's the flesh that's weak. And, and, and like I said, I can't stress, I can't stress it enough that on that great day, when the Lord returns, we, we not, we're not going to have a justifiable reason. Because especially if we have the Holy Ghost, there is, the Bible said, if a man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So now we are this new creature, but we are still compromising and justifying why we are operating in the flesh as new creatures. And, and hear, hear what the lesson is about. It's about being lured. It's about being enticed. It's about how they were lured and enticed in creation. <laughs> I know we like to sit around and talk about Adam and Eve, but flesh is flesh. As far as far as we have come, we like to think flesh is still flesh. Because we are being lured and we are being enticed to make, the Bible tells us not to make provisions for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Lead us not into temptation. You can do it. This is your kingdom. You have the power. You have the glory. Moving on. Oh, he said, he said, would not suffer you to be tempted above that you're able. He said, but we're with the temptation. We're with the temptation. Also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. Bear it is to endure it, to go through it, to bear it. Ah, hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. You're going to go through it. I'm going to go through it. <laughs> There's no way around going through it. You're not going to go through it because life is an experience. And at some point, we have to stand on the word of God and stop justifying while we keep being lured or enticed by this flesh at some point. Uh, 2 Corinthians 11, 3. 2 Corinthians 11, 3. It says, but I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his uh, 
Don't say it because I I looked at that word all day the other day. I even got the thing the computer to pronounce it for me. So I got it. Don't say it. Don't say it. I got to say it. If I don't say it, I ain't gonna ever get it. Subtlety. Amen. Subtlety. Now, I, let me read it again. <laughs> Verse three, eleven and three. But I fear lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety. There it is. When you hear what the Spirit is saying to the church, it ain't gonna be no big old, big old monster, big old red thing that you can identify. It's subtlety. That we just keep compromising and say, oh, it's okay, it's okay. No, it's not okay. Stop falling for this temptation. Stop being lured or enticed. It's, the enemy is he's subtle. Oh, my God. Everything is not all right for the child of God. A child of God is supposed to live a sacred, sanctified life. He said, come out from amongst them and be ye separate. But we join with them in everything. We are we 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 keep falling for the, the lurement, the temptation. Because they keep telling us, oh, there's nothing wrong with this, all oh, that. So we join in. Keep joining in. Keep joining in. There, there is no sanct there's no sanctification. There, there is there is no uh <laughs> who did who and where did he save us from? If we, if we, if we new creatures and still doing the old stuff, did Christ, did Christ die in vain? Was his death in vain? Jesus said, "Upon this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it." The gates of hell gonna knock against the church. Every let me, let me say it like Job said it. Job said it like this. Job said, a uh, man that's born of a woman is of a few days and full of trouble. You and I, you and I are the body of Christ. Jesus said, upon this rock, upon Christ, I will build my church. I will build my body. The church is the body of Christ. He said, in the gates of hell, Shall not prevail against us. The gates of hell is gonna knock against, gonna knock against us, gonna knock against us to the fact that Job said that man born of a woman is of a few days and full of trouble. It's gonna knock against us, it's gonna knock against us. But I heard David said, many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord will deliver him from them all. Now, how can how can you and I be delivered if we always being lured into it? <laughs> we got to do like Moses told the children of Israel: stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Stop falling for the okie doke. Stand still and watch the Lord bring you through. We keep falling for the enticement. We keep falling. We keep being lured. And then we're trying to justify why we keep failing God. God said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Now, how do you justify not keeping his commandments? You can't. Because you don't love him. And it, then he went a little deeper. Galatians 5th chapter, the 6th verse. He said, circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision availeth anything. He said, but faith, which worketh by love. So, let's go a little deeper. He said, without faith, it's impossible to please you. Why? Because faith works by love. So, oh my God, you got to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. We have to stop falling for the enticement, the lure. And we have to stand, we have to stand because of the love of God. Faith works by love. If you love me, 
keep my commandment. Faith is simply obedience to the word of God. Faith is not some pretty definition that we like to make up. If you ask every so-called Christian in the world, he or she would give you a definition for faith. God is not the author of confusion. That's too much. There's one Lord, one faith, one baptism. One baptism. God is not the author. There was a time when every man did what was right in his own eye. But the Lord said, he, he winked at that. He said, but now it's charged every man everywhere to repent. You got to repent and come on back to the Lord. We not we not justifying we not justifying the fact that we are disobedient. That's not happening no more. I mean we doing it, but the Lord is not accepting it. When He said, listen to what He said. He said to my disciples, when you pray, tell ask the Lord lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil. Why? He said, for thine is the kingdom, because this is. You're the king in this kingdom. You got the power and the authority. All right, so where's our faith? It's lacking because it lacks love. Because why? Because we still want to be, <laughs> we still want to be a part of the flesh game. And he, and he told us in the last lesson that the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eye and the pride of life is not of the Father. Not of the Father. But you keep justifying it. It's not of the Father. I got to run for show now. My turn. <laughs> Ephesians 6, 18. It says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Praying Always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Catch this part. And watching thereunto with all perseverance. And watching. And watching. Diligent. Watching is diligent. Thereunto with all perseverance. With all perseverance and supplication. For all saints. This is the manner which we are to pray, because we are we are to pray that the Lord lead us not into entice, enticement, lurement, into temptation. We have to be diligent, we have to be vigilant, we have to be perseverance, meaning we have to be uh, consistent. We have to be consistent. Paul said, I die daily. <laughs> we have to be diligent. Uh, diligent. He said, watching. Scripture said, he said, watching. He said, watching thereunto with all perseverance. We have to be diligent, consistent, constant, mm -hmm. persevering, watching, and, and consistent. Why? Because we don't want to fall into enticement. The Bible said, the Bible said, when this the Bible said when the spirit is gone out of the man, and the spirit is walking around in dry places, and the house, the man's house is empty and swept clean and garnished. It's empty and swept clean and garnished. It says the spirit comes back to that man and brings seven others with him worse. You can't be, you can't be left empty. You got to fill it with something. You got to fill it with the spirit. When, when, when the evil spirit, the Bible says, go on out of it. And, it, and that evil spirit is walking around in dry places, trying to find somewhere to go. Now, you didn't clean your house and swept it, but it's empty, left it empty. 
So he comes back. And not only does he come back, he brings seven other spirits back with him. It said in that last, it say in the last state of that man is worse than the first state of that man. God, the Lord is not playing. The man, what the man on Friday say, ain't nobody playing but us. <laughs> but uh oh uh Smokey say, no, Greg say he ain't playing, I think he's playing about his money. The Lord. The Lord is not playing about his creation. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, and whosoever believeth in him should not perish. God has made provisions for you and I to be victorious. Mm -hmm. Yet still, we won't stand on our provisions. We, we know a better way. Wake up. Wake up. And because we're not like the Old Testament because we're not in that dispensation where punishment was immediate when they when when they sinned, they died immediate. We think everything is all right. No, we we are living in the dispensation of grace. And grace, the Bible said grace rejoices over judgment or justice because we haven't received what we're supposed to because we received grace. But you have to understand that it's going to come a day. The scripture says some men's sins go on before them. Some men's sins come after them. <laughs> but there's going to come a day when we stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And whose name is not written in that Lamb's book of life. If it ever was, at some point it got blotted out. Because when that, when that book is open, and if the name is not written in there, there is, there is there's, no, there's not going to be no justifying. Either you held fast your faith to the end, or somewhere you gave up the victory. Think about it. Stop justifying. Stop justifying disobeying the word of God. Mm -hmm. it ain't, like I say, we're not living under the law. It ain't like it ain't like he's gonna come tell you, okay, I just took your name out. You gonna live, we're gonna live our whole life. <laughs> it ain't funny, but hear what the spirit has said to the church. There was some men that got that got there and said, Lord, Lord, didn't we cast out demons in your name? Did we heal the sick? Didn't we raise the dead? He said, depart from me. I never, I never knew you, you workers of iniquity. When you got iniquity in your life, don't rejoice in iniquity, the Bible says. Iniqu iniquity will keep you out of heaven. Read your Bible. Mm. Do not rejoice in iniquity or over iniquity. He said, get away from me. I never knew you, you workers of iniquity. We think just because we say we can do what we want to do. No, we ain't going to continue to fall for temptation. And, and I ain't going to stay in that book, especially, especially you got to hear what Jesus is telling us as disciples. For thine is the kingdom. This is your kingdom. You have the power and the glory to deliver me. So if I'm not delivered, why is that? Moving on, just think about that. Because if I'm the king and this is my kingdom and my realm, then I'm sovereign. I come on, somebody. Anyway, let me let me run because my time for sure. Hebrews 2:18. I got to go. It says, For in that he himself has suffered being tempted, he is able to secure them that are tempted. In that Jesus himself was tempted, he is able to secure or to help or to aid or to, to deliver you and I who are being tempted. It's a lack of our faith, which entails is a lack of our love for God. Entails what is the reason why the Lord said we can't please him. Because we don't love him. We don't love him enough. 
to put our faith in him in order for him to deliver us. We keep compromising and, and, and we keep compromising and being lured and enticed of Satan. Satan operates in the flesh. And we gonna get, let me get to these last two because they're going to bring it all to the, to the head. <laughs> Hebrews 4.15 It says, For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Jesus is our high priest, and he, he, he feels our infirmities, or he feels our weaknesses. He feels where we struggle. He knows where we struggle. It said, but he was tempted at all points like you and I. It said, but without sin, he never yielded to the enticement. You know, you remember the story in Matthew. That's why we read that first. You remember the story with Matthew when he was out in the wilderness and he didn't, and, and, and Satan tried to offer him the kingdoms of the world. We tried to, we tried to be involved with the kingdoms of the world and try to justify. It. No, you got to stand against the kingdoms of the world. Listen to what the script, he said, look, he said, uh, for we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. He, he's going through everything you and I will go through. But was it, he said, but was it all points tempted like as we are? Was all, in all points, he, Satan tried to lure him. Satan tried to entice him. Satan tried to seduce him. It said, but yet without sin, he did not fall for the temptation. Why do we fall for the temptation? Having the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead. Why is that? Why can't we overcome this flesh in this world like we were commanded to do? Why do we still have to be a part of it? Like we were commanded to come out from amongst them. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil. For thine is the kingdom. I'm confessing that you're the king in this realm, and you got the power. So why am I think about it? Moving on. All right, James, first chapter. Now we got to take note to this. Take note to this. This is going to bring it all to a head. This is going to bring it all to a head. James, first chapter, verse 13 and 14. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil. I know you're going to say, well, Jesus, you got <laughs> wisdom. Wisdom is the principal thing. <laughs> so get wisdom. But with all that getting, get an understanding. Listen to what the scripture says again. The scripture says, let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil. I know we're going to say, well, well Satan tempted uh, Jesus in the wilderness. No. Satan attempted to tempt Jesus. The scripture said, God is not tempted with evil. Satan was wasting his time. Oh, you got to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. He attempted to, to tempt God in the wilderness. But Jesus was not tempted one bit. He put the word on him. Wasn't tempted one bit. Put the word on him. Put the word on him. He didn't sit there like Adam and Eve, he didn't sit there like Eve and talk to him. Now she was tempted. Jesus was ne never tempted. He had no intention on being lured and, 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 <laughs> and making them stone bread. All right. It's... Neither, now, 
I'm going to read it again. We're going to go a little further. Read it again. This is James 1, 13. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil. Neither tempted he any man. So, when you are tempted, since God cannot be tempted with evil, God is not tempted of evil. He ain't caring about that. And the Bible says he don't tempt you and I with evil. So when we have our little philosophies and say, well, maybe that was the will of God. God don't tempt you with evil. God don't tempt you with adultery. God don't tempt you with fornication. God don't tempt you with jealousy. God don't tempt you with evil. Those are works of the flesh. God don't tempt you with that. So how do we get tempted with that, Jane? I'm glad you asked. Keep reading. Okay, check this out. <laughs> and so the scripture concludes to say, 14th verse says, but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Mm. Not God. God does not tempt you with, with evil. God is not tempted with evil, nor does he tempt man. But we are drawn away, but we, but we are tempted when we are drawn away of our own lust and enticed. Our own lust. Because what is lust? Lust is desire. Mm -hmm. Because, well, I, I desire to do this. That's lust. Then we try to explain that away. Well, it's not really lust. Okay. <laughs> Moving on. Moving on. Lust is a desire, and desire is lust. Second Peter, and I'm gonna let you go. Second Peter, second chapter, in the ninth verse, it said, "The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptation, and to reserve the unjust until the day of judgment to be punished." That's what I was talking about earlier. If you go in your Bible and you read Second Peter, second chapter, you read verse three to verse ten. And verse 9, which we just read, says, The Lord knoweth how to deliver the ungodly out of temptation and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. Mm -hmm. I know we like to say, oh, we got grace, we got grace. All that means, all grace means is that uh, God's love and, 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 and favor, it rejoices over judgment, but judgment is coming. Because judgment, that's the reason why the Lord is coming. Because of the uh, sinful men. This is why he came in Noah's time. And when you read that, that's what it deals with, Noah's time, and it reads with Lot's time. Because of the wickedness of sinful men in those times, God had to come and bring judgment on the world. Now, if you can discern the signs of the time, the sins of wicked men in this time that we're living now, the Lord is soon to come. Because judgment has to be passed on unrighteousness. And so, as the disciples of Christ, it is our, it is, the Lord tells us that we should pray, lead us not into temptation. Right. We have to stop being enticed and lured by the works, by the subtle subtleness of the flesh, the subtleness of the serpent. That word subtle means cunning or craftiness. Right. He's crafty. He's, he's cunning. Mm -hmm. He's smooth. He's slick. He know how to get you off a little bit. <laughs> And, and still have us justified thinking that we still in the grace of God. No, we won't be. If we fall, if we yielding, if we yielding to temptation. Look, just the fact, just the just the fact of yielding to Satan is unright. That's a sin. 
Jesus said, I, Jesus didn't even, he wasn't even bothered by that. He said, I mean, look, I ain't turning these bread to these rocks and no stones. Anytime, anytime we disobey the word of God, anytime, anytime. Mm -hmm. But as it is always, we encourage you to repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins and allow the Lord to fill you with the Holy Ghost. Scripture says, except a man is born again of the water and the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. God cannot lie. The day is coming. And if we don't have our wedding garments on, we're not going to be in the wedding. There was a man that was in the wedding without his wedding garments on. The Lord said, how you get in here? He said, Bind that man, cast him out of here. You got to, you got to put on Christ. You got to put on the garments of salvation. You got to put on it. You got to put it on. Well, we got to give you up. Pray that you receive something from the Word of God. Continue to study the Word of God. The scripture says, "In them you believe you have eternal life, but they are they that testify of Christ." Christ is the life, the truth, the life, and the way. Christ is our life. But he is our life through the scriptures. Pray that you receive something. Continue to study and stay in your word. And we pray that you continue fellowship with New Beginning Community Church. Let us pray. We're going to give you up. about it. Be gracious in heavenly Father, in the precious name of Jesus. We come tonight. Thank you once again. For the word, the living word. We thank you for what we have heard. We thank you, Lord, for the presence of your spirit. We thank you for your, your that you so love us that you sacrificed your life on that cross, Lord God. You sacrificed your son, Jesus Christ. We pray that you would continue to lead us and guide us by thy truth. We know that thy word is true. Take us from this place, never from your presence. Bring us back again at the appointed time. And we'll praise and glorify you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.